Hey everyone, welcome to Johnny How To. So in this video, we're gonna talk about a technique that I wish I had known years and years and years ago when I was first doing this project way back when I was in school and where you need to create a clean plate, meaning that basically in this shot, I wanted to replace Owen Wilson with my friend that was dressed up and kind of acting like him as a character replacement. Well, you need to take Owen Wilson out of this original shot in order to do so. And of course, this technique applies to a lot more things than just character replacement, but basically what we need to create is a clean plate not having the character or object there, and then you put in the new object or use the clean plate in some other way. And what this method that I'm about to show you does really cuts down the guesswork on if you have things aligned perfectly or not. And the basic idea on what this does is what happens if you blend a fully black color and a fully white color and blend them together. So right here, just as an example, I have a pure black constant and a pure, pure white constant. And in this dissolve node, once I have it set, I'll double click on this. Once I have it to 50%, what do you get? Well, as you would guess, you get basically a neutral gray. And doesn't sound too impressive right now, but the way we can use this to help us actually create a clean plate can be really, really useful. So I'll go and move this off to the side for now. And uh, the other thing that I haven't talked about too much in the other videos I've done so far is the sticky note. And if I press tab and type sticky note, you get this basically like a sticky note you stick in a refrigerator or a desk or whatever, and you can type whatever notes you need. And this can be really useful if you're passing off your script to someone else, or if you're leaving for the day and you need to remember what you're working on, or you got a task list. So like, you know, say fix, uh, fix edges or comp and ship. You have this list of things that you have that you can move anywhere in your comp and you can just check things off as you go. And of course you can change the font and the size of things as you're going along. So. Before I started this, I kind of picked out some frames that I thought would be good in helping create a clean plate for this Owen Wilson character here. So I had said frame 405, 357, and 478. So what I'm going to go ahead and do, if I go ahead and go to frame 405, where we are. So he has his arms up. I can see quite a bit of the headlights and the emblem back here and some different parts of that. So that can be useful there. And then I have 357, 478. So what I want to do from the get-go is I want to make still frames of these frames to where it's just like I took a still image and I'm not using it anywhere else. I could, if I, since I'm using a TIFF sequence, I could drag in the physical frame from the folder it's stored in, but you don't need to do that. You can go ahead and use a frame. There we go. And go ahead and plug this guy in. And in the options here for first frame, whatever I type in here is what it's going to hold. So if I type in 405, and I'm not doing this, I go ahead and go through the timeline and it's animating as usual. But if I go ahead and select the frame hold that says frame 405 and press one to view it, load it in the viewer, now you can see this is just a still image. So this is a nice way that you can make still images out of frames that you need to keep uh, remaining the same over the duration, even if you're moving around the timeline. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy and paste this a couple times. I'm gonna do the same thing in my sticky note for 357. And also I'll go ahead and plug this guy in. I'll go ahead and do this for frame 478. And I'll go ahead and close these guys down and line these guys up with L for a line. And if I go and view these, so we have arms out, kind of shifted to the left a little bit, and then arms down completely. And what we're gonna try and do is without having to go into Photoshop or having to try and inside Nuke and using the clone and stamp tool and manually recreate areas, we're gonna use the source imagery to try and create as much of a clean plate using the actual original pixels as we can. So to start off here, the problem with this footage, if I go ahead and play it back, is you can kind of see that the footage is moving. It's kind of handheld, and if I just hover my mouse right there and don't touch it, you can kind of see that the frame is moving around. Now, you could track this and stabilize it, and that would save some time in this process, but since this is not about tracking, and I want to talk about this kind of neutral gray method of creating a clean plate and aligning images, I'm going to go ahead and do this manually instead. So I have these three frames that I'm going to work with, and the first thing I need to do is line them up. And just like we used our neutral gray method here, we're going to use this with the actual imagery here as well. So the first step is I'm going to invert one of the images. So I'm going to go ahead and press tab, type invert and go ahead and add an invert node. I'm gonna plug this into, so basically you're gonna choose one of these still frames 
and have this be your master that you're going to paint from. I'm gonna go and use one where I see the most of the hood and just kind of try and take out his arms and as much of his shoulders and his head as I can and repaint what's behind him. So that's this is gonna be my main one. I'm gonna line up these two other frames to align with this particular one. So in the invert node, I only want to invert the red, green, blue channels. I wanna invert the alpha channel as well. So I'm gonna change this from all to RGB. And if I go and view this, we're kind of getting a funky psychedelic type look. But this is kind of the same thing as taking a black. And if I inverted the black, what do you get? Well, the invert of black is you get white. And then when I mix those two together, then I get that neutral gray. So if I take this and I now merge it with the original or what I'm using as my mainframe and view it. And in the merge, I need to change the mix value to 0.5 or 50%. And now you can see what I have if I darken this down a little bit is I'm starting to get that neutral gray method that we're working with. And just to make this a little bit easier, I'm gonna add a shuffle node after my main footage, and I'm gonna change the alpha channel to white being solid. And the reason that changed what we're seeing here, if I disable this, you can see it goes from that to actually being gray in these areas, is because when a image has a, let me go and view the alpha, a black alpha channel, when you merge it on top of another image, so I'm merging this still image, over this still image, even though you think you're putting like one picture on top of another, when the alpha channel is not white, like it is in the original, it gives you some unreliable results. So what I basically did is just said, okay, you know what, I wanna make the alpha channel white. So when I stack basically these pictures on top of each other, they're not see-through in some way or another. In fact, I'll go ahead and change the, the label of the shuffle node to white alpha, just so I know that that's what that was doing there. So now if I go and view this merge, and I'm gonna go ahead and darken it down and make it a little bit easier to see, now we're getting kind of what we expect if we mixed a black and a white together and dissolved it at 50%. We have this merged together at, again, 50%. And I could use a dissolve node as well. Where the areas are not aligned, you can kind of see here that we have this kind of embossing effect where they're kind of close but not quite. And areas where the color is very close, it's kind of more of a pure gray. Now the background isn't perfectly aligned, but since the color of it is very, very similar, if you look at it here, it's just kind of this grayish, it doesn't show as much. But this can help us a great deal in aligning these images. And again, so this is my master frame. I'm not going to adjust this one, but this one, I'm gonna go ahead and add a transform. So just T for transform. And now I can use the on-screen controls, but it seems to be much easier to use the numerical controls over here. So under the translate X, I'm gonna hover in front of this zero right here. And I'm gonna use my up and down arrow keys and this will nudge it slightly to the left or right. And as I do that, you can see that as I get closer to having these lined up correctly, they start to merge more to gray. And now if I go ahead and go onto my vertical alignment, if I go down here a little bit, I can see that these are actually lining up quite well. So I'll go ahead and do H to fill and you can see that pretty much everything except for the actual character of Owen Wilson that is moving and some particular parts on the car are completely gray. And what, so why are these parts on the car not perfectly gray? Because they are lined up, but they're not perfectly gray. Well, the reason being is that in our original shot that we have here, there is light flicker and the light flickering from the fire is changing the specular highlights on the chrome and that's making it to where they're not lining up perfectly. But now without having guesswork of, of having to try and line these up really slowly and, and trying to see if it's right or not. So when I did this project when I was in school, I used Photoshop and so I basically mask out certain areas, nudge them over and align them. But what I found out when I tried to splice together everything at the end is I was off by just a few pixels and I had to keep going back and change it. But now using this neutral gray method, you're taking the guesswork out of this. So I'm gonna go ahead and move and reuse this 50% merge and invert on this frame over here as well. And I'm just gonna repeat the process. So I'll add another transform node here. And now on frame 478, I'm gonna nudge that around until it's aligning with the original footage as well. And it looks like vertically this is pretty close. Yeah, so either in between. You can use decimal values. So sometimes you, you might not wanna use decimal values because it is gonna soften the pixels using whole numerical values, but you can try decimal values that really helps you as well. So I think around there, it looks like it's lined up. And the, basically the way you test this now, I'm gonna go ahead and turn my luminance from my viewer back to normal. So I'm gonna go and view my frame 405 Go ahead and close down these nodes right here so I don't have anything in my on screen. Actually, let's take a look at this before. One, two, three. This is the raw frames. You can see that the camera's jumping around, right? 
But if I go and view my frame 105 and then the transform version two, press three on the key strip and view it full screen. Now I can see that the border's moving a little bit because I've had to move around the actual images. But say I hover by this corner right here, that's not really moving around anymore and neither is the rest of the car or the background. So this has allowed me to isolate this and line everything up much, much easier. So this was just to line up the images. How do I actually use this to start the beginnings of a clean plate? I just did Control Shift X or Command Option X, I think it is, to uh, extract those nodes and I'm gonna put those off the side in case I need them later. But now I actually wanna start making my clean plate. And the way you use that is using the paint node, which is P for paint. I'm going to plug in my base image, which is my frame 405. And once I plug that in, I get this side input that I can pull out here that is my BG1. I'm going to plug this guy in right here. I'm going to, try, I'm going to view this. And this is viewing basically the two images on top of each other. So I'm seeing frame 405 on top of 357. But since I haven't erased or revealed any part of frame 357 or 405 yet, I'm not seeing through to 357. So I'm only seeing the image that's on top of the stack right now. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to hold down on this clone icon and choose reveal, which the keyboard shortcut is C to toggle between these. And I don't really have a brush right now. So I'm going to hold down shift and left click and drag. And that's going to let me resize my brush interactively. The hardness, which is the softness, you can adjust up here. But basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the parts that I want from this image and combine it with the parts I want from this image. So I want to get rid of his arms and a little bit more of the windshield up here and things like that. So I'll go ahead and in my paint node, select one to view that. I have my reveal node selected and I have my brush. I'll go full screen and zoom in a little bit. Now I can just go ahead and paint over this. And again, I'm not having to clone like I would in Photoshop or that you can do in other programs and in Nuke, but I'm actually taking the real pixels from the original imagery, just from a different frame that's been offset and aligned and bringing that back. And if I go too far, you can see I'm starting to bring in his arm from the other frame. But you can see up until I hit that point, I'm bringing in the real pixels from the other frame. And let's see, it looks like I'm not going to get much more over here. I might get a little bit up here. There we go. So I got a little bit of that. And if you feel like you ever went too far, you started bringing in stuff you didn't want to, you just change this over to the eraser tool and you can erase away certain sections and bring back that top image. So from here, it looks like I've helped out a little bit. Also, I kind of want to use the brighter version of the... Uh, the emblem down here. So I'm going to go ahead and choose a reveal and you can see it's a little bit brighter down here. I just like that not being quite a shadow. But if I go too far again, you can see I'm bringing in his arm from the other frame. So I can always go easily back to the eraser and erase that back out. So he doesn't really move, uh, Owen Wilson's character doesn't move a huge amount in the duration of the shot. So I'm not going to be able to paint him completely out, nor do I need to paint him completely out. I just need, when I put the replacement character on there, I just need to not see Owen Wilson's character underneath. So uh, let's go ahead and take care of his other arm here. Poor Owen Wilson, we really turned him into a, into a freaky guy here. I'm going to make my brush a little bit bigger. And we're bringing back in other areas of the car that we would have to have maybe had to Photoshop and clone and stamp otherwise. So we've gone from basically from, I'll press H to fill this. We went from here and after we line these up and using one roto paint node and just did a reveal, we've gotten rid of part of Owen Wilson's character. And let's go ahead and try and get rid of a little bit more using this last one. There's not a huge difference. So what can I gain from this result that is not in this one? Let's see. Um, maybe a little bit more of the headlight. I mean, really not a whole lot. Yeah, maybe just, I mean, that, that might not even be necessary. But just so we can have another one to piggyback and just see how this is all working. I'm going to select this Roto Paint node. And before I do that, actually, one thing I want to mention that can be very frustrating. So I'm on frame 397 right now. And notice that all every single paint stroke and reveal and eraser that I did here has been recorded by the paint node. And you can see it says life is 397. And notice I'm on frame 397. If I use the arrow key and go to frame 398 or 399 and I'm viewing the roto paint node, which I wasn't there, my paint strokes go away because they only exist on this one particular frame. So if I want these to remain constant and consistent and uh, persistent over all the frames, I need to select all these paint strokes that I did for this paint node right here, this roto paint node, and go to the lifetime tab, if you weren't already on the lifetime tab, and change this to all frames. Now that this says all, I can slide through 
the timeline and scrub through and you can see that it's going to remain. So that's one thing that can be very frustrating if you don't remember that is you might be doing some paint work and then you go to another frame and you're like, wait, what happened? What I was doing? Unless you tell it to, it only exists on the frame that you were painting on. So let's go ahead and do one more paint node. So it's P for paint. And since I have this little input here, I'll go and plug this guy in here. I'm going to go ahead and try and gain a little bit more from this other frame hold. And again, let's take a look. What can I maybe get? Hmm, it's not in the other one. Well, not a whole lot. Maybe just a bit of the shoulder here. I'll try a bit of the headlights on the bottom part, but not a whole lot. But so let's go ahead and view our rotor paint node, double click, make sure the controls are on screen. I'll close down the other one so I don't accidentally adjust that. I'll use the reveal tool, hold down shift, left click and drag to size my brush. I'll zoom in and let's see if we can just get a little bit more of this headlight. Oh, we're getting a little bit more of the arm back too. So really not a whole lot that we're gaining on this one, but the more the character moves around, the more you can get back. And so we actually are getting some benefit from this. And if I went a little bit too far, I'll press N to toggle between the brush and the eraser and I'll just erase away this little bit right here. And you just kind of go through and see what you can get as you're going through and trying the different frames that you have. So this is by no means a finished clean plate. Um, poor Owen Wilson. There we go. Here's an eye in the middle of a Cyclops guy. So uh, looking like Sloth from Goonies now. So this is by no means near finished, but if we go ahead and again, view what we had starting with, look at frame 405, and then we'll press two on our roto paint result. We can see that we have taken some of the guesswork on what's behind him and gotten a good amount of pixels basically for free and not having to recreate what's back there. And again, if I wanted these to, to persist over all the frames, I would need to, in this roto paint node, just select all these different strokes that I did and go to, to the lifetime tab and set them to all frames. And then if I scrub through, they'll continue to work over time. And you can see it actually records all the different brush strokes you did so you can erase or do different things with all those as well. So that's kind of the concept of the neutral gray alignment method, which I've found to be extremely helpful and I wish I'd have known about a long time ago. And then also how I can use the paint node or the roto paint node in order to bring in some of the other frames to start the creation of your clean plate. And maybe another video, I'll, I'll take this clean plate to completion and do the whole process, but hopefully this can be really helpful to you in your workflow. Again, the same process kind of carries through to After Effects as well. There's an invert effect, and you can just nudge them over each other. You just set one image on top of the other and set it to 50% opacity. You should be able to use that in there as well. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next Johnny How-To.